Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new study that investigates the major differences and the reasons for these differences between Neptune and Uranus. They look so similar, but are they? Let's talk about this and welcome to What Math. Now, if you've been on the channel long enough, you know that my opinion of our solar system is that it is one weird and unusual place. Every major planet we have seems to be completely different from everything else we're observing out there in other star systems. We know, for example, that the terrestrial planets we have are very unusual, and planet Earth specifically is totally weird, although a better word is totally unique. And although there are a lot of things to say about other gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter, today we really are going to be focusing on this new study that tries to investigate the major differences between Neptune and Uranus, and more specifically identifies the reasons for these differences. So let's look at these two planets in a little bit more detail. Because I mean, if you just look at them from this angle, they do look somewhat similar. They are actually almost identical. It's very difficult to tell a difference between them. And so if I were to show you this, for example, and then instantly show you this, would you be able to tell which one was Neptune and which one was Uranus? They both have um, somewhat similar size and mass. They both have a relatively similar location in the solar system. They also both have rings. You can sort of see the very dim rings around this object, which is of course Uranus. But there are some really significant differences, and these differences needed to be addressed because this helps us understand how the solar system was created. So first major difference is in the way these two objects are spinning. Notice how Neptune uh, spins almost um, aligned with the plane of the solar system, even though it's just a little bit uh, more inclined. While Uranus, on the other hand, spins almost entirely on its side. The angle here is roughly around 98 degrees. In this beautiful simulation created by James O'Donoghue of NASA, who actually works for the Japanese Space Agency now, you can even see the main difference between the spins of these two planets. Which of course suggests that both of these planets must have experienced something to get such an unusual axial tilt. Over the years, we've also discovered that Uranus, despite being closer to the Sun, is actually a lot colder. And it seems to have a lot less storms on the surface compared to Neptune. Neptune does seem to produce a lot more various stormy activities. So there is more heat inside Neptune, it's farther away, yet at the same time seems to be warmer. There's something going on here. What could have possibly gave Neptune so much extra heat, especially heat on the inside, compared to its somewhat similar, I guess you can almost call it twin planet, Uranus, which doesn't seem to have any heat signatures and seems to be in equilibrium with its um, solar system environment. And to try to solve all of these questions and all of these problems, the scientists behind this paper right here that you can find in the description below decided to simulate a lot of different things that could have happened in the early solar system. And most of these simulations involved, obviously, collisions. So here obviously they took Uranus, for example, and then collided various things with it. Then they did the same thing with Neptune as well, making sure that all these collisions were under a different angle, different types of objects colliding, and of course, um, with various speeds and uh, different types of composition. And what they've discovered is that, well, there were several types of collisions that could have occurred to both of these planets that would explain pretty much all of our observations of their anomalies. So for example, as you just saw with Uranus right here, one of their suggestions is that there was probably a collision with a relatively large terrestrial planet, but it wasn't a head-on collision. It was more of a grazing collision in this manner, where the planet very likely just hit the side and possibly a lot of the parts of this planet even then started orbiting around Uranus, creating a kind of a ring that then ended up creating most of the moons that we're seeing today. In other words, it's very likely that this collision then resulted in the production of all of the moons we're observing around Uranus today. Which makes this exceptionally interesting because moons like this one, this is Umbriel, the largest moon of Uranus, could potentially be leftovers from this collision and could actually be parts of this ancient planet that collided with Uranus. That would be really interesting for us to investigate in order for us to study what these early ancient planets would have been like and if they were somewhat similar to various terrestrial planets we have today such as Mars, Venus, Mercury and Earth. On the other hand, this is not probably what happened around Neptune because to explain the anomalously high heat coming from inside of this planet, 
it had to have received a terrestrial planet collision almost entirely head-on, and this planet very likely then actually reshuffled and rebalanced the inside of this planet, giving it an extra heat that it's now still kind of losing. In other words, this heat that initially was probably very very high and very dramatic as you can see, eventually dissipated, but it's still not completely lost, and this planet is still losing heat from the inside, thus creating all of these storms we're observing on the surface. And this type of a collision would also explain the very slight 28 degree deviation that Neptune has compared to the, the plane of the solar system. So in other words, this planetary collision gave it a little bit of an axial tilt, but not nearly as much as Uranus. And there are a few more pieces of evidence that support this idea, specifically if you were to look at the internal structure of both of these planets. Based on the gravity models, we've discovered that Uranus, for the most part, is more or less balanced. Its gravity is kind of pointing toward the center of the planet. But weirdly enough, Neptune is not, and it's a little bit shifted to the side. In other words, the planet's center of gravity is not entirely in its center, as if something kind of collided with it and got stuck there, thus giving it this extra density providing extra gravity. And a few more things can be easily explained with these collisions, such as, for example, their unusual magnetic axes and the overall magnetosphere of both planets that's kind of difficult to explain unless something major collided with these planets and really kind of shifted around all of the internal structures. But I guess the question now is, so where exactly did these two extraterrestrial planets come from? And the thing is, we don't even know if they were terrestrial, we just know that they were massive enough to cause these effects. Now we know today that there are quite a few planets we expect to have in the solar system that are missing, like for example this is one of the reasons we believe planet 9 might exist, because we do think that at least one major planet was present in the solar system and it's no longer here. But at the same time, there are many other theories that suggest a lot more planets were present in the early solar system that are just no longer there. For example, today we know that Earth definitely received a collision from another planet, it's very likely Jupiter did as well, as did Mars, and uh, for the most part we have evidence of all of these collisions, and I've discussed this several times on the channel. So we know that at least five planets definitely existed, and they I guess collided with the rest of the planets. But this obviously doesn't answer where they came from, they could have been just leftovers from the initial planetary disk, or they could have been created through the collision of other planets that used to be here and eventually fell apart. So discovering the origin of these collisions and origin of these planets is kind of also important for us to understand how our solar system evolved. But thanks to these state-of-the-art 3D simulations from University of Zurich, we now have this pretty clear picture on how the Uranus and Neptune might have developed and why they're so different. Now it's still just a hypothesis and it definitely needs a lot more support from the scientific community, but it is a pretty strong study and definitely gives us a pretty good idea of what happened to all of these planets in the early solar system. But once we discover more about both Uranus and Neptune and once we discover more about these various collisions, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, here's some more collisions for you to enjoy and Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, check out the wonderful person merch that's also in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.